This racist rant from Australia is going viral right now. And why does it seem like stuff like this is happening more and more often? Yeah, I mean, this is going viral in a lot of different corners of the internet. It comes from Sydney, Australia. Let's run the clip. I mean, I don't think the incident needs that much explanation, Andrew. There appears to be a young Chinese immigrant male sort of just doing his job, wiping the table. And there is an older Australian lady, Andrew, who's chastising him, saying, get away from me, you dirty Asian. But she doesn't say dirty. Yeah, right. Um, and, and, you know, like, I think everybody has seen stuff like this happen. It feels like it happens more and more. Maybe it's just being filmed more. But either way, it raises some questions about white entitlement, white nativism. How do people feel? Is there anything minorities or immigrants can be doing a little bit differently? I guess we're going to break down the range of reactions in this video. So please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys right now. Let's get into it, David. Real quick, I mean, I think the most upvoted answer was from, like, liberal white people who saw this, and they were just like, oh, my gosh, it's 2023. I feel really terrible. I think everybody just needs to get along. I've got some people in my family, my extended family that are mixed, that are mixed with all different types of things around the globe, and I feel like we just need to all get along. This is messed up. Yeah, and I, I think that one funny question is always like, hey, if everybody did a DNA test and found out they were actually 3 to 5% of a different ethnicity, would that even make you feel any differently? And maybe it wouldn't change this lady's mind, but I mean, some people would even deny it and not, you know, not take the results, obviously, but right. I don't know, maybe, maybe it might help. One of the next most common responses, Andrew, was actually calling out the racist puritanical Anglo-Saxon ideology mm. that's basically saying the further you are from this, like, I guess, Anglo-Saxon or pure Anglo ideal, the dirtier or less worthy or the lower in the hierarchy of uh, races that you rank. Yeah, and I think a lot of the argument is like, well, this is this is our society and we built it. People like you didn't build it. it was people like me, they look like me from Sydney. Uh, but... I would say like, I don't know, this is like obviously not a realistic thing to do, but what if everybody had to walk around with a resume of what they contributed to society instead of people just feeling like, oh, people like me and my family did this and this and your family just got here. Yeah, and um, obviously I think that these attitudes are more prevalent in like rural parts of the country, to be honest. I mean, they're probably more pre uh, prevalent in rural parts of America as well or any part of the New World, Canada, for example, too. And a lot of people were mad though because this guy just looked like he was busting his ass, doing his job, probably not getting paid a lot of money. And I think that that's what made other people mad too because they're like, look at this fat Karen, like she just probably came from Queensland and she's just a bogan. She's yelling at this young Chinese fella. He's just trying to eke out a modest living, wiping tables, working hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like we said, I mean, I think that it changes it if he was like trying to scam her or something, but he's like just trying to live his life. No, he's just working. He's just working. Other Literally. people were like, uh, you know, to Native Americans and Aborigines, you guys were the terrorists to them because you guys came and took them over and killed them or took their land. Andrew, but the response to that, and I've been seeing this pop up a little bit more lately, is from like maybe like moderate right, like center right white guys who are like, yeah, that was messed up. But you know what else was messed up? Everything that everybody was doing to everybody at that time. Mm -hmm. We might have just happened to be the most effective at it. And now we're asked to pay for the sins of just being the most effective. And uh, I just don't think that's right. Can we just zero it out and move forward? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's an interesting perspective. And I think for the most part, everybody would like everybody to be cool and treat each other as equals as everybody says they should. And I mean, a lot of people do do treat each other with equal respect out there. But yeah, I mean, things like this always just remind you, be like, damn, maybe in their heart, they don't really feel that way. And it doesn't make, it doesn't bode well with like immigrants and minorities. And I course. just think the majority of people that you meet in IRL, at least functionally, don't treat each other very differently. Yeah. Like in terms of like when you're in the streets doing regular day interactions, buying things, I don't think that there's that big of a shift. However, obviously it depends on what city you're in, what neighborhood you're in, how you present. And there's like a whole bunch of other things that are involved with it. Someone said, uh, yeah, man, Australia is one of the most racist places on earth. Whatever they say in their, uh, have in their mind, they just blurt it out. Even if it's like, very un PC. And I thought it was a really interesting comment because from what everybody's told me, Andrew, Australia is a place where you're less likely to have racial violence, but you're almost more likely to hear like a snide remark that would be considered unacceptable in America. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Australians like to talk their crap, mate. 
Like we like to pop off, you yeah. know? Especially, you know, in Sydney, Melbourne people were a lot more chill. And you know what <laughs> the interesting thing was? Somebody was like, yeah, that's just Australia. We don't even like rich people here. Like, I guess people who flaunt their wealth in America are given elevated status, but people who flaunt their wealth in Australia, it's like a tall poppy syndrome. Anyway, yeah. it just goes to show you that a lot of things are different over there. Um, someone said, it ain't about rice. It's just about making sure we all assimilate to one culture. But, I mean, you, you hear that argument now, right? I, I guess I, for what I'm saying is I want to acknowledge that there are, like, middle right arguments from white people that I do think that hearing out both sides as a minority, you have to, like, at least listen no, to no, it, No, right? no, I would say this one has some merit. I understand. We all talk about assimilation, why, what it does to society, why, in a way, it's good. Also, it washes out some of your motherland culture 100%. But... You just have to weigh it out and but, you have to do it. You have to, there, there's different types of assimilation. But doesn't it seem like there's like so many different tiers of assimilation yeah. and different people have different thresholds for like what I'm comfortable with. Yeah. Maybe oh, I was that Karen lady that was 50, 60 years old that's eating all those Anzac biscuits and meat pies. That's why I'm kind of jolly. I mean, kind of got a big belly. But then what if I have a more 1950 Australia answer and you're just trying to dial it back to 1990, but I want to go all back to like 1945. And that's... That leads us to the next comment of dialing back the clock, David. What, what did this person say? Well, someone was just like, well, it ain't wrong for us. We just thought it was perfect how it was in the 1950s and 60s. And I noticed that it's just different. Like, I guess different people with different perspectives, Andrew, want to dial the time machine back to different times, right? Because that's when they were... I guess, in their prime or the most dominant, right? Well, isn't it just like by age? Like somebody who's 80 years old might want to dial back the clock and be like, well, you know, the 1960s were the best because they were like flowing in the 60s. They were young, strapping, doing whatever they wanted. And then like some, like a 30-year-old white dude might be like, you know, I, I remember the 90s, yeah. man. And the you 90s know what it is? Cool. <laughs> Sometimes I think that there's this correlation causation like discrepancy where it's like yeah i was doing the best because australia whatever was less racially diverse and i'm like it could have just been that that was your prime too like yes those two things happened to you know society happened to get more diverse and there was more technology but that doesn't necessarily mean diversity is against you yeah i mean i think i guess for like a 50 year old white person somewhere they might feel like the white world only got worse in their lifetime versus for immigrants and like people from asia definitely life got better in the past 40 years yeah right and Clearly. i think that a lot of it is too like i could see listen i i totally understand if i was just like a pro only anglo person i could see how it, it got more complicated sure, right sure, sure. but i definitely think you people got to focus on making the society better with what the society is right now instead of like trying to dial it back yeah that's i like mean one of the main issues right now because literally that is like a crazy way to do it dude it's still great to be white right now are you serious just just adapt and be like a cool white person that's still a, a well big you still role. get like kind of get the top status yeah you the still get world. a lot from it Jeez. Um, somebody said, oh my gosh, these Karens are everywhere. And somebody said, well, you'd be lucky to live where these Karens live. These Karens didn't want to move the way your people right. are from. Okay, all right. I, I, I do want to acknowledge that the whole idea of a Karen does come from a more developed Western society. That's where they come from. It comes from Australia, UK, America, and Canada. That's it. That's where Karens come from. So we have to acknowledge that those are nice countries. People want to move there a lot. So you want to move to a place where somebody is so privileged, they act like a Karen. Maybe that's what this comment is saying. Right, right. But I think that they're using that almost as an end all be all argument. Like, yeah, we have the more dominant civilization. You're right. moving here. Take the deal that we offer on the table, take it or leave yeah. it, which totally discounts how much immigrants add. Obviously, historically, we could even go into all of the things, you know, that are just so difficult to talk about. But yeah, anyway, somebody said, um, yeah, man, how come in nobody helped? Somebody should have slapped that lady in the face. And I was like, whoa, 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 guys, because the way the lady was acting, I definitely do not agree with the violent response to that, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think I, she was walking away. She was obviously swearing at him, but she wasn't threatening him physically. She wasn't getting in his face. He was walking away. I, I don't think he took it too seriously. You can kind of see he's kind of like brushing it off. You're like, man, this crazy old lady. Well, she's, he's probably an immigrant too. He's probably yeah. like, he's just like, oh yeah. I whatever. mean, it's, it might not even be the first time you heard it, yeah. unfortunately. I mean, I definitely think that it's good to show the video and expose it. And then 
even if people want to find out our information to take it to that level, you know, that's your own prerogative. You know, different people are going to feel like different intensities and extents of it. But yeah, definitely. I'm not a big uh, proponent of, uh, of violence. Uh, yeah, due to verbal, I mean, I, especially like man on woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like it's that, not you know, like, it's he, like she was pressing him and there's a woman and a man. Well, anyway, uh, um, somebody said, uh, well, it is true that Chinese are taking over Australia, though. I mean, I don't really agree with the attitude, but um, you, you, know, you have to say the observation is correct. Yeah, I mean, you better take it up with your government then. You better take it up with all those real estate people that are selling all the land. You better take it up with the business people of Australia who are selling all their companies to China, right? Because that's actually what you're talking about. You berating this lowly Chinese server, it ain't going to do anything. It's so, it's so like... And not only that, too, people have to understand it's just because people look like you. It's just like colors how you perceive it so much. Like, this guy's trying to add value. Yeah. Literally, I bet you a white Australian does not want that job. Literally, he just wiped up the table that you ate at. Anyways, David, what's your overall takeaway? I would say that this is a really difficult situation in terms of, like, trying to fix it. You know what I mean? You're just talking about um, almost like an old world mentality versus a new world mentality. Um, not in the sense of new world, like these are all new world countries, but I'm just saying like, you know, just embracing the change, working within it. I'm sure there's absolutely things to be nostalgic about. I'm sure that a lot of white people are, you know, they're mad. They're like, you know, I can't even tell you the first rock band in the last 10 years that became popular. You like, you know what I mean? Like, it's true. Like, I guess in pop culture, I, I haven't heard of like, a white musician get really big in the, since Taylor Swift or something like that. Yeah. So I, I guess I could see if I was like number one, A1, A2, and A3 rank for a long time, I, I could see some sort of like thing that bothers you I about mean, that. I it, mean, it just seems like in the age of globalization and social media, maybe white people feel like white people have peaked in the past 15 years, right? I don't know. You know, I'm not even saying they have. I still think it's great being white. I'm not even going to try to put it on that type of ranking. But anyways, my whole thing is like, listen, man, these Karens and these verbal microaggressions or aggressions that you want to call them, it's going to happen more and more. And I think that in person as like minorities and especially Asians who are oftentimes seen as small and helpless and easy targets, we got to come up with a better response. Like this to me, I'm not going to lose sleep yeah. over this incident because it's just not the biggest incident to me. I'm more worried about like the physical violence, yeah. right? And, and the I things think it's like, yeah. And it's not just white people. I think it's everybody towards everybody. Yeah. But yeah, obviously you're going to point out when it's the dominant I mean, group versus you, the less dominant groups, but it's just like everybody got to acknowledge that we can be different yeah. And that, that it's okay. Maybe you don't got to think it's great, but you got to at least see that it's where it's at and, the, and see the benefits of it. Yeah. And prep yourself, guys. There's going to be things that you hear, little side remarks, maybe at work, maybe through a friend of a friend, maybe on the internet, of course, maybe from a random fat lady who's eating at your food court. Like, it's going to happen. So I think, like, I think Asians need to just stop acting like it's not going to happen again. Or I, don't, I just don't... Don't be shocked because if you're shocked in that moment, you're not going to be able to react properly. So I guess that's my one thing. I always say this, man. I think that it's dope if everybody can be best friends, but even if we can't be best friends, it's got to be civil. It's got to be chill. Let us know what you guys think of the incident in the comment section below. Obviously, the comments, they went there, here, there, there, micro, macro. And uh, yeah, we're not scared to talk about anything until next time. We the Hot Pop Boys be out. Peace. Peace.